last video I got to the point of showing that if the government spends, it increases the equity of the private sector, and if it taxes, it reduces that equity. But I still haven't looked at how the, gov how the uh, Treasury funds itself. I've just got it basically running a, de a, a deficit if it spends more than it gets back in taxation, which is what I'm showing in this particular uh, simulation here. And if I run it on indefinitely, what you get is a negative amount of money in the uh, deposit account the Treasury has at the central bank. Now, this isn't necessarily a, a rare thing. Uh, plenty of people in business have overdrafts, which actually means they've got a, a deposit account at the bank with a negative amount in it, and they pay an interest rate on that negative amount. So it's not uh, totally out of the ordinary to have this happen. But what if there is a rule that the government cannot have a negative balance at its own bank, and instead it has to finance the gap between uh, spending and taxation by issuing bonds and selling them to the private banks. Well, let's say that that's the case. Uh, so the government has, so let's say Treasury has to sell bonds to banks, <coughs> to the finance sector. And to do that, of course, it has to have a liability, a new liability, uh, which I've got TL there for Treasury loans. Uh, that's if I have them borrowing from the central bank. But I'm going to look at the normal situation where they're required to sell bonds instead. So we have a liability of the uh, of the Treasury called Treasury bonds. And if it sells, uh, let's say I'll call it the government sells bonds to banks. So that is increasing its liability because it sold those bonds to the banking sector. And that, of course, means that it can increase the asset it has of the money in its deposit account. So that's balancing the two out. The, the sale of bonds to the banking sector increases the contents of the deposit account of Treasury, and it then spends out of that. And I can now say that, uh, let's actually just finish a few other parts of that. That's just talking, looking at it from the point of view of the, the Treasury, what's actually happening in the banking sector. I'll put the Treasury's window down here and bring up the banking sector's window here. And I now, having shown that the Treasury bonds are a, an asset of the, uh, uh, sorry, a liability of the Treasury, I now can show they've got to be an asset of somebody else and they're an asset of the banking sector. So that's turning up there. So it's now selling the bonds uh, to the um, to the banking sector. Now, where does the private banks get the money to buy the bonds? Well, they already have money sitting inside their reserve accounts at the central bank, and in fact, the amount of money in those uh, reserve accounts is determined in this model, in this very simple model, but again, structurally quite realistic model determined by the fact that the government has spent more than it's taken back in taxes. That has actually put the money in the reserve account. And this is one of the points that Stephanie makes very well in her book. Where does the money come from uh, to buy the, where do the money? Where do the banks get the money to buy the bonds from the Treasury? They get them because the Treasury created that money by spending more on the private sector than it gets back in taxation. That spending occurs over here in the liabilities of the banking sector, which are the assets of the, the firm sector, that's what I'm looking at here, but that also increases the assets of the banking sector, it necessarily has to. So they get the money from their um, reserve account. So the money to buy the bonds from the banking, uh, from, the, from the, the money that the banking sector needs to buy the bonds from the government turns up in the um, reserve accounts, courtesy of the very fact that the Treasury is running a deficit. Now I could have uh, the banks, uh, I could have the government funding only part of this or, or some sort of uh, limited amount, but the simplest way to model this is to say that the uh, sales of bonds to the banks are equivalent to the government deficit. So let's now start putting the deficit in there, make a bit of space for it. So the gap between government spending and government taxation is the government deficit. spending minus tax is the government deficit. And the easiest way to define 
the um, uh, sale of, of bonds uh, by the Treasury to the banking sector, this G lower G subscript B superscript B, is that that's they simply buy every the, the, well, the Treasury sells every hang on the Treasury sells enough bonds to cover the gap between uh, spending and taxation. So I'm going to have G underscore B superscript B here, which I've already defined elsewhere in the Godley table. I can just type that into the system because it'll, it'll now look that very value up. So there is the act of the government running a deficit and then financing that deficit by selling bonds to the banking sector. And you might ask, why would the government sector, or why would the banking sector make the decision to use the money that's been created by the government's deficit in its reserves to buy bonds instead? Again, Stephanie explains this very well in the deficit myth. It's because normally the rate of interest on bonds is higher than the rate of interest on on, on uh, bank reserves. So why wouldn't you? You've been given the money's been created by the deficit. It ends up as you're an asset, which is earning no in income for you as a bank. You are then offered to convert those non-interest earning bank reserves into interest earning bonds. Well, duh, you'll do it. So the government actually gives the banks the money that's needed to buy the bonds. There's no problem in raising that money. Now let's go back and take a look at the Treasury again now and see what happens if I restart the simulation and see what happens to their uh, amount of money in the Treasury deposit account. Well, it remains at zero because this gap here, the fact that the government's spending more than it's getting back in taxation, is covered by the bonds that the government then is selling to the uh, banking sector. And therefore, it's running up a debt to the banking sector. It's got negative equity. That's not going to change. The, the, throughout the system, the government's going to have negative equity. But the amount of money in its deposit account is, ke is kept at zero. Now, I should have prepared for this, but I'm just going to hope I'm lucky and find it uh, rapidly anyway. There's, if you, uh, any any um, students are likely to know the wonderful uh, St. Louis Fred database. So I'm going to bring up the St. Louis Fred here. <coughs> Pardon me. And I'm going to look for the Treasury. Hang on. Treasury account. Okay. Deposits with Federal Reserve Banks. I want you to focus on the first bit of this data rather than the final bit. Look at that. Okay, ever since 2008 it's gone crazy, but before 2008 that was as close to zero as a number can be in, given this comparison of the scale to the amount of the American economy. This is billions of dollars. Okay, so there's a trillion. The American economy is 20, roughly 20 trillion dollars. And we're talking down here 3 billion. So that's basically rounding error until the financial crisis hit, and I'll talk about that in the later video, and then of course until the coronavirus hit when it's gone through the roof. But under the normal sort of operations in terms of a, a non-crisis period for the economy, you can fundamentally regard the Treasury's account, uh, deposit account at the central bank as being zero. And of course with the mathematical simulation that's exactly what I get. So this is basically emulating what the uh, Treasury is required to do in terms of having a, a, a zero balance or a non-negative balance in its deposit account at the central bank. It does it by issuing bonds. That's the first stage of this exercise. Now, of course, once you've issued bonds, you've got to pay interest on them. So we now say, what what is the level of, of outstanding bonds? That's the, to go back to the window here, that's T, uh, T underscore B, or tre T lowercase b, Treasury bonds. So you've got to pay interest on those. So let's just bring Treasury bonds into the game over here. Actually, I'll pull spending and tax over this side, just to give myself a bit of room here. And move the, looking at the equity of the non-bank sector over here. Okay, and then drag this over here. So now we've got the actual annual sales of, of bonds to the uh, by the government to the banking sector shown here. Uh, 
the term, I've got t, t underscore, the T lowercase b, as the symbol for treasury bonds. So let's bring that back onto the canvas. And I'm now going to modify that by the rate of interest on bonds. Now what is that? Well, I haven't actually defined that yet. And I, I could make it a variable or a function, but I'll just basically make it a, a, um, a parameter and give it a moderate range there. Uh, it can be zero. And make it the changes by, let's say, by one-tenth of a percent in the rate of interest. Oh, what I've got here, TB, what's the circle for? I may have a generated an error in Minsky there, I'm not sure. Look, looks OK. So I wire that up here, that's Treasury Bonds times the uh, rate of interest on bonds, and that's going to be what the Treasury pays as interest to the banking sector for the bonds that the banking sector has. Let's just now take a look at the Treasury here. So pay interest on bonds. And so that is going to be a um, reduction in the so, so interest on bonds to banks is going to reduce the asset. Mm, it's going to come out of there and it's going to reduce their equity. So that's the government paying for its interest charge, interest payments on the bonds. Come over to the banking sector now, and rather the central bank, pardon me, takes a while to get used to putting all those bits and pieces in here. So there's the interest payment. And that has to come, uh, that's coming out of the Treasury deposit account, and of course it's going into the reserves of the banking sector. And then over in the banking sector, now we've now got that, so they're being paid interest on, on the uh, uh, value of their um, bonds. The, the interest goes into the reserve account. It's being paid on the amount of money that's outstanding here, but it goes into the reserve accounts. And that, of course, increases the equity of the banking sector. So there's the banking sector making money out of the fact that it's buying bonds off the government, using money the government's created by running a deficit, and now on top of that, they're getting interest payments on that amount of money. So that's how we work out IBB, and I'll just uh, now type interest on bonds to banks over here, and then that's wired that up. So now they're paying interest on the bonds. So we do all that and I'll carry on from that point for the next video.